Hello, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a uh, review of the uh, European markets for end of days trading the uh, 10th of March 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and decipher as to uh, what is uh, going on here in terms of European markets because we certainly have had a uh, roller coaster of a session. So let's try and decipher as to uh, what is uh, going on. Okay, now in terms of the uh, stats, let's just bring up the uh, the actual information for you for end of day. Uh, the FTSE finishing up 28 points. It was actually as high as 73.70 at one point. Okay, uh, on the back of potential rumours of BP being bought out by Exxon. Okay. Also, obviously, with the oil prices uh, certainly building a potential base as well. Okay. In terms of the uh, German DAX, we actually closed down minus 15 points. We were actually up as high as 11, uh, 12, 0, 50 at one point, so up almost 100 plus points before we actually gave the gains away. The French CAC up 11 points. We were actually as high as 5, 0, 20 at one point. Now, bear in mind, the, the rally in Europe was on the back of a hawkish Draghi. And with Euro USD above the 1.06 handle, it's actually uh, moved even higher now. It's at the 1.0680 handle with potential talk uh, and a potential leak from the uh, from Reuters uh, discussing a potential uh, rate hike prior to uh, uh, the uh, tapering process. So again, that certainly has uh, helped the Euro move swiftly higher and therefore indicating a hawkish stance or maintaining the hawkish stance for Mr. Draghi. Now, again, like I said, um, the Nikkei certainly pushed higher overnight impressively, uh, even though the Shanghai index was relatively weak. We also had weak economic data from the UK as well. Uh, we did actually get trade balance slightly better than expected, but the uh, the actual uh, overall data from the UK certainly weaker as well. German exports did actually help the German DAX rally in the morning. Exports, imports certainly stronger and trade balance stronger, but I think we've already known that. That certainly has been the recurring theme. In terms of the UK, uh, also with regards to fr French data as well, we had industrial output and Spanish retail sales weaker, UK industrial production, inflation data stronger than expected, manufacturing production, industrial production, certainly all on the weaker side. So again, certainly a risk-off factor there. In terms of US, it was all about NFP. NFP basically came in more or less in line uh, in terms of the uh, unemployment rate. Uh, the actual uh, jobs created, certainly impressive, 235k, uh, stronger than expected, although the average hourly earnings certainly dropped back down to 0.2%, which again indicates a weaker dollar, okay, given the fact that the Fed may well potentially hold. Now, if oil prices continue to move low, which they have done after hours, with the rig count increasing, although there have been comments from Mr. Barkindo indicating that there is some sort of agreement now with the shale producers and the OPEC, uh, producers uh, in terms of stabilizing the price of oil which again obviously is a positive sign because there is a threat that the uh, the shale producers are certainly compensating for the cut in supply via OPEC okay so that certainly is the uh, status quo okay so let's bring up the actual uh, charts now and let's see exactly what's going on here in terms of the German DAX bear in mind you have this rising contracting wedge pattern on the daily chart so again does indicate potential bearish price action going forward so bear that in mind also, obviously, with the extent of Mr. Draghi being hawkish. Now, having said that, the markets totally ignored that today. Okay, so just bear that in mind, folks. Okay, markets ignored that thesis or that theory altogether. And from a weekly chart perspective, the next real resistance really is seen around the 12,380. So another 300 points between friends, uh, as they say. Okay, certainly... Um, just bear that in mind. That's all I can say. Certainly take that into consideration. Okay. Daily chart does have a bearish pattern though. Bear that in mind. And the double top certainly held as well. So bear that in mind. 60 minute chart. The German DAX. Like I said, we ripped higher, which again was very, very confusing given the fact that Mr. Draghi was hawkish. Okay. Uh, we actually held that gap fill level and then we reversed quite powerfully, but right back down to 11,920, which again, very confusing. Okay very very confusing from my understanding and my reading of the markets very very confusing especially given the fact that we had the nasdaq testing the double top high as well okay so nasdaq actually ripped higher back up to 5390 and was threatening to take out that 5400 level which again is very confusing s p certainly ripping higher as well so again u.s markets certainly pushing higher again confusing the uh, 
the actual uh, muddying the waters in the sense that Mr Draghi's hawkish stance was certainly expected to trigger risk aversion globally and that certainly didn't transpire at all okay as German exports imports that obviously came in strong in the morning okay now let's go to the 10 minute chart let's see exactly what's happening here next German DAX again we flushed we did actually put in a bottoming tail here okay so bear in mind obviously the German DAX is supported by strong exports and imports so that bottoming tail certainly held around that 11940 zone so you are looking at support at the 11920 zone on the German DAX so certainly take that into consideration as well okay now let's move on to the French CAC now let's see where the CAC is uh, positioned daily chart of the CAC itself you have a topping tail on the French CAC so just bear that in mind you've obviously held that resistance now the French CAC has been very 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 stubborn as of late okay very stubborn very frustrating to trade really has been doing nothing at all okay if I go to the 60 minute chart you'll see that you have that unfilled gap below at 438 you were still unable to close that we did hit a bit of a high of 5020 knocked out all those stops okay and uh, certainly so again that unfilled gap below certainly remains in play at 4980 okay so 10 minute chart oh yeah 10 minute chart okay so you're looking at the unfilled gap at 4980 if the market continues to flush on the French CAC then uh, you certainly have that support at 4940 now bear this in mind the interpretation via Draghi, okay, or post Draghi thus far, has been the market very similar to the US as well. Bear this in mind, okay. Now the US is slightly different in the sense that US does not have stimulus, okay. Oh, sorry, the uh, the US has fiscal stimulus in place, whereas Mr. Draghi does not, okay. So the US is is basically weaning itself uh, off uh, the uh, monetary stimulus, okay, by obviously Fed going hawkish. But then it's being supported by fiscal stimulus, so i.e. it's cushioning the actual blow, okay, in terms of uh, weaning off the uh, QE or the Kool-Aid, okay. Now, <clears throat> Draghi hasn't got that uh, novelty or that uh, uh, that cushion, okay. He hasn't got that hedge, okay. So again, it should be double negative, and that's why you're seeing the spike in the Euro U U USD today. Either way, just, just bear that in mind, food for thought, okay. But... The spin that was put on today was the fact that uh, the market, European equities are moving high on the back of Mr. Draghi, reassuring them that the bottom is in now in terms of negative growth. Although the economic data from France and Spain certainly uh, countered that, well, certainly was a contrary to that argument. Okay, although German DAX uh, or German economy certainly remains stellar, as we already know, uh, in terms of its trade surplus, etc. Okay. So again, French CAC, from my understanding, especially given the political uncertainty with the latest poll that's been released as well, uh, BVA France poll, first round, Le Pen 26 unchanged, Macron 26 up 2, and Fylon 20 plus 1. So again, political uncertainty exists as well. So how do we navigate through all that? Okay, just, just food for thought. Okay, food for thought going into Monday's trading. Okay, in terms of European indices. Okay, let's move on to the FTSE 100 now. This again was another frustrating index. Okay. For me, especially after yesterday's bottoming tail, a lot of volatility here, a lot of volatility on the upside and the and then the bottom and the uh, low side. Now you can see here, the pivot low was for 72.63 yesterday, and that's exactly the bullish green candle uh, open. Okay, today's but topping tail was a pivot high at 73.73. My stop loss at 73.75, so I just about survived on my short position, only to see it reverse in the after hours. Okay, so daily chart, as long as it remains within this green candle, folks. Uh, from a technical perspective, markets remain bullish, just bear that in mind. And provided it remains above this uh, key resistance uh, here at 7315, market remains bullish. So bear that in mind. Those two factors are very, very important. Okay, 60-minute chart now. 60-minute chart of the FTSE 100. Let's just have a look here. You are looking at resistance at uh, 7375. So watch out for resistance there at 7375. If you do pull back, then you're looking at potential support here. Let's just uh, see if I can uh, organize this. Okay, so that triangle trend line is no good. Okay, so I'm just going to use this for now. Okay, so again, if we pull back here, you are looking at 200 MA potential support around the 7280 as well. So watch out for those two zones, okay, in terms of the, uh, the actual FTSE index itself, okay? So... Uh, a pullback alternatively a 60 minute chart can actually continue to thrust higher up to uh, 7 375 7 380 then you have 7 390 now the FTSE itself was very strong today due to multiple reasons number one 
uh, well, technically should have been bearish, okay. Uh, but number one, Asian markets obviously stellar overnight. U.S. markets uh, are pushing higher. The S&P are hitting that 2376 level. Uh, Nasdaq trying to go for that 5400 new uh, all-time high level, okay. Oil prices stabilizing at 49 with Mr. Barkindo potentially talking of a, an agreement with the shale producers. So again, that's certainly helping as well, okay. Also, in terms of the uh, sterling, sterling still remains at 1.2150, so weaker sterling helping the FTSE itself, okay. Uh, also, with regards to um, Asian markets, US markets, so again, those two factors at play, okay, in terms of the FTSE. And now, there, all, there was also talk of ExxonMobil potentially putting in a bid for BP, and that was certainly helping the oil majors uh, move higher as well. So, that's another factor to, to take into consideration too, okay. Okay, so moving on to the 10-minute chart on the FTSE 100 now. Okay, let's just see. You are looking at potential support here at uh, 7345. Okay, in terms of the upside, you're looking at resistance at 7370, then resistance at 7372. So let's watch out for those two resistance zones on the FTSE. There is a possibility that we could get a potential H&S reversal. So again, keep your uh, mind open to that. Okay, so that certainly is a possibility with this left shoulder here, head, right shoulder. So again, let's just see exactly how the market plays out. We did actually close that gap at uh, 73, 74. So very, very close to being stopped out today. Okay, so again, it certainly seems like stop loss, or sorry, stop loss hunting, but gap fill hunting today. That certainly was the... Uh, the approach in terms of the markets at present okay so that certainly is the status quo of the FTSE you are looking at resistance around the 73 70 73 80 73 90 so bear that in mind okay okay now in terms of the uh, the actual euro stocks last but not least folks okay euro stocks again frustrating day for me today in terms of pushing higher than putting in a topping tail so given the fact that it's putting the topping tail on the French CAC and the French and the Euro stocks again, certainly needs to be respected going into Monday's trading session. So we'll see exactly how that uh, unfolds and uh, transpires. Okay, now um, topping tail on the daily chart, on the Euro stocks, 60 minute chart, Euro stocks, you are looking at reversal here. You have obviously previous resistance equal support at 4307, gap fill support at 4 of 3410, and so 3407. Again, if you put, continue to push lower, you have 3475 as support, and then you have the unfilled gap below at uh, 3320. So again, like I said, hawkish draggy, but yet today's European markets told us that they are not concerned, and we'll see that if that theory can hold true. Okay. 10 minute chart on the uh, euro stocks uh, you are looking at gap fill support around the 3410 level if you continue to flush lower then you have support around the uh, 3400 and then the 3380 level so conclusion okay conclusion my interpretation was that uh, the uh, the hawkish draggy stance was going to trigger a risk aversion trade which coincided with the nasdaq kicking in with its hns formation okay if I move into the Nasdaq, just give you an insight here as to why I was bearish. Where are that Nasdaq? Here we go. Okay, so the Nasdaq itself had a HS formation. So you can see the left shoulder here. You had the head. Okay, then the right shoulder was being brewed around this uh, 35375. And then we were going to get a flush. The flush was going to be triggered by Mr. Draghi's hawkish stance. Okay, and obviously for Miss Yellen's hawkish stance as well. Potentially close the gap fill below at uh, 5330, then flush even lower, and then you have a gap fill below at 5220. And that was my potential scenario. That's what I was expecting in the markets. Uh, how wrong was I? Okay, how wrong was I? Okay, the markets certainly didn't uh, adhere to that plan and had an alternative plan. So again, uh, like I said, you just have to uh, respect it for now. What can you do? Okay, uh, the market actually pushed higher, the Nasdaq pushed higher and tested that double top at uh, 53.95. I was very close to being stopped out there uh, as well, okay. And uh, then we've obviously reversed and now we're potentially bouncing off previous resistance equals support. So it really is a conundrum right now in this market, an absolute conundrum and very, very baffling, okay. Uh, and on that note, I think I'll uh, certainly close here. Conclusion really is... Uh, yes, Mr. Draghi is hawkish, and technically, yes, that is negative. Euro spiking to 1.0680 is negative, and therefore net net negative. But yet, European equities rally today, and they have put in topping tails. Okay, the German DAX certainly put in a uh, bearish candle by the end of the close. 
So it'll be interesting to see, and again, also Nasdaq has put in a double top now, and it'll be very, very interesting to see how this market closes, okay? Monday's trading session, neutral, neutrality, okay, neutrality. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the...